I am currently walking the battlegrounds of Gettysburg. And in the last episode, we were exploring the, the infamous peach orchard here that, that formed the, the tip of the salient for uh, General Sickles on the Union line on July the 2nd of 1863. And right now, we're just down from the peach orchard in a place that if you look at the whole Battle of Gettysburg over the course of three days, right here is where the most violent fighting took place. This is the bloody wheat field, which has been described as a whirlpool of death that sucked soldiers in and then spit them right back out. So we are in now the wheat field. And if you were here on the morning of July 2nd, 1863, this is just another wheat field. There's nothing special about it. You've seen one wheat field, you've seen them all. But very soon after the fighting on the afternoon, early evening of July 2nd, this stops being a wheat field and it becomes the wheat field. More specifically, the bloody wheat field. This is probably acre for acre the bloodiest piece of ground here at Gettysburg. And what's interesting is when visitors come to the battlefield, our day two stops usually are going to be the beautiful vista that you get from being on Little Round Top. The really neat, almost sort of sinister looking boulders you see at Devil's Den. But as far as combat and intensity, this is it right now. For two and a half, three hours, it's a swirling, chaotic fight. For me to tell you where the battle lines are, it would be almost impossible. It's, it's such moving back and forth, it's a very fluid fight. The ebb and flow of it is just terrific. Needless to say though, when it's all said and done, the carnage here is almost hard to, to put into words. Depending on the source you look at, anywhere between four to 6,000 Americans are killed, wounded, captured, missing in and around this field. It's kind of weird. Everywhere you look, you're looking up. Yes. You're, you're like down in a bowl right here. Yeah, really. And, you know, when I would say wheat field, you would think, okay, well, it's this flat field. Well, <laughs> it, it isn't flat here. We're really in a punch bowl. And you can yeah. kind of see that here. You have high ground all around us. So in order to hold the wheat field, you've got to hold the peach orchard. You've got to at least hold little round top. You can survive losing Devil's Den, but if you lose either the round tops or the peach orchard. You cannot hold this ground. And eventually what we're gonna see on July 2nd is Confederates capture Devil's Den. They're going to capture the peach orchard. Confederates begin sweeping down William Wofford's Georgians from the west. That's eventually gonna drive Union troops out of this position because they cannot hold it because of those basic deficiencies in the topography that we see here. So is this kind of become like a salient within the salient? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, what we're gonna have, you know, one of the more kind of, powerful accounts I've ever read are Union troops that talk about that final moment as Confederates are sweeping down from the West. They talk about the first time we realize we are in danger is when we start getting shot in the back. Oh, shoot. We turn around and go, wait a minute, there's guys in gray back there. <laughs> we got to get out of here. So now we see this wheat field line shifting back towards Cemetery Ridge. So what we now see by uh, the time about 6.30, 7 o'clock, the Confederates have captured the wheat field. But once again, Fighting begins here, 4.35 o'clock. 
this bogs Confederate troops down in areas, which I hate to say it because this is going to sound horrible, the wheat field does not matter strategically. Devil's Den does not matter strategically. Thousands of soldiers fight and die for ground that ultimately does not matter. The objective is Cemetery Ridge and Cemetery Hill. Precious lives and time are spent trying to capture these areas that would have been open had it not been for some guy named Dan Sickles deciding to move 10,000 men forward earlier that afternoon. The spot where I am standing right now is the area where the Confederate divisions under the command of James Longstreet would have launched their attack from. Now, uh, keep in mind that this is not a, a full-on documentary. I'm just kind of showing the places uh, here on the battlefield. If you really want a good detailed analysis of the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, I, I would highly recommend the American Battlefield Trust. They, they have some excellent resources. Uh, but where I am right now is the Rose Farm. Okay, and again, this is on the far southern end of the battlefield. This is the area where Longstreet's divisions would have kicked off their attack on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. And, and I wanted to start off at this spot because it really gives a, a kind of unique and, I, I don't know, I guess you could say a clear perspective of where the battle lines are at here on the second day of the fighting. So from right here at the Rose Farm, you really get a good sense of, of where the battle lines were. So off there in the distance on the horizon, uh, that, that would be the Peach Orchard. So this is where the Confederates under the command of Kershaw would have advanced, so right through here. And then if you look off to the right, there in the distance, uh, right here in this area, kind of that open area, well that is the wheat field. Uh, now, it doesn't look like a wheat field, but they call it the wheat field because it was planted in wheat during that time. And uh, there's going to be a, a bunch of uh, Confederates from Georgia who are going to be advancing to that position. Now, this is a, a bit of a sidebar, but I wanted to include it just because I find these kind of things interesting. Looks like there might be a little bit of archaeology work going on here to possibly rebuild this structure on the Rose Farm. So yeah, Gettysburg, active site, all kinds of things going on here all the time, always learning new things. Real quick before we move on, this is the house on the Rose Farm that was here during the Battle of Gettysburg. And I'm just as fascinated by the civilian stories in this battle as I am the, uh, you know, the, the military side of things. Uh, this house was right in the middle of some some heavy fighting. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've heard that there was a dinner bell on, on the opposite side of the house that all throughout the battle uh, kept dinging as, as many balls were striking it. Um, and it was uh, used as a Confederate, I don't know if you would call it a hospital, it was probably more of a triage unit uh, just to, to get wounded men uh, out of the line of battle. Um, before they could be moved on. I don't think you'd really want to try and do any surgeries there. But anyway, we're going to head off now to the wheat field. There's a moving scene that takes place up on what is now Hancock Avenue prior to the fight here at the wheat field. A Catholic priest by the name of Father William Corby was standing on a rock, not this one, but one quite like it, and uh, was in front of troops from the Irish Brigade on the Union side and uh, was offering absolution from their sins and commending their souls to God and encouraging them not to turn their backs on the enemy. And uh, there was a major there by the name of St. Clair Maholland who recalled that there wasn't a man there who didn't offer up a heartfelt prayer in that moment. And for many, it was their very last. Had to be a lot of fear and a lot of prayers going up on both sides that day before 
heading into this awful place. Here's an information panel down, basically at the, the bottom of the wheat field. Um, just giving a, a little bit of information about the battle. One thing I haven't mentioned is the, the Stony Hill off to our left. But here they have an artist rendition of the aftermath. And uh, one soldier said that after the battle in this field, you could pretty much walk from one end to the other on the backs of the dead and never touch the ground. So I've moved up the hill now and I'm on the, the northern side of the wheat field. Uh, this is where the, the Union lines would have been. So I'm standing right where the Union troops uh, would have been positioned here in the wheat field. And kind of like we were just talking about, whenever you get out here and you actually walk the battlefield and you see the terrain, it gives you a better understanding of the battle. So this is the whirlpool of death and <laughs> I can I can understand why, because if you're the Union and you're advancing down into the wheat field, well, yeah, you might push the Confederates back, but now you're in the bottom of this punch bowl looking up and now the Confederates have the advantage. Confederates push you back, you're now up here on the high ground, you have the advantage. And that's why it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth, and why there's so much carnage just here in this small piece of acreage. Here's something else that they've done here that I really like. There are these markers that show where the battle lines were. So here you can see, uh, it says, on the right it says RF 148th PV, that means right flank 148th Pennsylvania Volunteers. And next to it is LF, which means left flank 81st uh, Pennsylvania Volunteers. And they would have been positioned right along this line up towards that monument. All right, and here's that monument that I was just showing to the 81st Pennsylvania Infantry, 1st Brigade, 1st Division, 2nd Corps. And if we, we go on down the line here, so all of those troops would have been lined up right here. Uh, we just left the left flank of the 81st. Well, here is the right flank. And then that butts up against the left flank of the 61st New York Infantry. And then you can see there's uh, a monument to them. And then even beyond that, if I zoom in, if I can focus here, you can see the right flank of the 61st New York Infantry. So anyway, that, that gives you a little bit a little bit of an idea whenever you come to Gettysburg of where the the Union and Confederate lines were. So there's another ghastly scene that takes place here at the wheat field, but it's not during the fighting, it's after. Uh, there's this story that I came across of a soldier who was wounded out in the middle of the wheat field and was there overnight and had his bayonet by his side because hogs moved into this field that evening and were eating the dead. And anytime one of the hogs would get up to him, well, he would jab it with his bayonet and try and keep them away. So as if the fighting wasn't a horror enough, having to fend off hungry hogs uh, just adds to the, the nightmare of the wheat field.
All right, well that was the wheat field here at Gettysburg. Uh, I think that a lot of people, whenever they come to Gettysburg, like this is a spot that they just, they just drive through and they're like, oh, it's the wheat field and then they move on. But if you ever come to Gettysburg, stop and spend some time at this place because it'll give you a greater understanding of the battle. And if you can, I would also highly recommend hiring a licensed battlefield tour guide to, to take you around. I, I, I'm just a monkey with a camera. Uh, the, the licensed battlefield tour guides here, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is what they've devoted their life to and, and they pretty much live this battle almost every day, have studied it, and, and will really kind of take a lot off the learning curve for you and, and show you things that you wouldn't see or know about otherwise. So anyway, that was the wheat field. As for right now, we're headed over to Devil's Den.